Hello, welcome to another road story. Yeah, my name's John. Um, I've been playing in bands, well, since I was 15. And, um, you know, over the years, <laughs> I've had a lot, of, a lot of incidents, some scary, some amusing, some just rambling tales. And, you know, all musicians that have been, um, you know, kind of mucking about with doing the band thing, no matter how big or small you get or are, you're always going to kind of build up a little memoir of uh, incidents and accidents and that kind of thing to bore your musician friends with when you find yourself sitting around in the pub. So, you know, I did one last week and people tend to like it, so I thought I'd do another one this week. Um, yeah, I play in a band called Alien St well, I play in two bands at the moment. There's Alien Stash Tin, who's a... Uh, um, sort of my main band, the kind of space rock, psychedelic rock, bit of metal thrown in as well. And uh, then there's Zob, which is an out and out punk band. And I also um, write uh, as a kind of unofficial lyric uh, providing member for a band called the Gravity Wave Riders, who's another kind of uh, psychedelic band. Um, not kind of friends of mine playing that I kind of write the words for. But anyway, this uh, story refers to Alien Stash Tim and is about from about 10 years ago. Now, um, I also am a radio DJ and through my kind of uh, dealings with, with the radio show in Bristol uh, on BCFM Radio, Sunday Rock Show, details for that, and my other show on Astro Radio down below, below there as well, as is the details for Alien Stash Tim. Or they're going to be over there on uh, um, Facebook, or is it over that way? One of the two. Anyway, do the finger dance. Well, Mrs. complains if I don't do a finger dance every episode, yeah. But anyway, um, uh, I made contact with a band called Void. Now, Void um, now getting quite famous. They are uh, now called the. They changed the name to the Scarlet Rebels, and they've had chart albums and singles, and uh, you know, and good luck to them. Not jealous in, in the least because they are a lovely bunch of blokes and if anyone I've come across in the music business deserves huge success, it's those guys. Hi guys, if you're watching. But anyway, um, through my contacts with uh, with Boyd, um, you know, I started making contacts with uh, kind of venues and people and bands and that from West Wales. And uh, cut a long story short, it started off with Alien Stash Tin, started going over and playing lots of gigs over in Wales, especially West of Swansea, Clenetley, um, Ammonford, all that kind of area. And, uh, you know, we began to build up quite a bit of a little, a little following over there uh, to the extent that we could get bigger crowds over in West Wales than we could in Bristol. But anyway, um, uh Two of our regular supporters over there, um, a guy called Di and his Mrs. Errol, uh, they heard that we were heading over one Saturday to play at a place called the Cas Bar in Clenethley, a uh, venue that we now sadly defunct, but we played there quite a few times. And um, yeah, we came, uh, you know, we got many stories of the Cas Bar. But anyway, when they said her we were playing there one Saturday, uh, they turned around and said, well, a friend of theirs wanted a uh, something special for their 50th birthday. And uh, could we go and play at a, 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 in a place called My Steg, right up in the valleys over there, in the Western Valleys? And so, um, you know, as a, you know, got a bit of a birthday present to them. They'll cover our petrol and give us accommodation, a few beers and a bite to eat. Well, the Casbars uh, are paying gigs, so we're always up for a bit of a party. So we said, yeah. So we um, booked what has now become known as the Wild Welsh Weekender. Now, um, at the time, our regular drummer, Bruce Morgan, was unavailable. I think he might have been on holiday. So we got our previous drummer, a mad French guy called Brice Ave, uh, came uh, came back. He also plays with my punk band as well, so I'm still in touch with Brice. But he filled in for the weekend. And, uh, you know, Friday evening, about, you know, tea time-ish, 
we all packed up the van and we shot off to my stag. Took a bit of finding. My stag's a little tiny Welsh mining town. Stuck up stuck up some valley somewhere. And, you know, I've lived in Wales. I've got a lot of friends in Wales. I'm not being disrespectful to the Welsh. But, you know, sometimes those valleys can go on for miles. So we drove up. We went through the main town. Then we went on a bit further up the hill, up the hill, until we found the venue we were playing at. Now, the name of the, of, of the pub was the something or other tavern. It's one of these Welsh words with um, too many vowels, not enough consonants. And, uh, you know, I'm sure they name them, the Welsh name their pubs and towns sometimes like that, just to confuse us English. But anyway, everyone called it either the Bryn or the Bran. Now, I, before I recorded this, I did spend a little bit of time looking for the venue, but um, couldn't find it. So I presume it's one of the casualties either of the pub closure uh, wave or of COVID. But anyway, whatever happened, the pub's not there anymore, which is a shame because it it was a quite a nice venue. Very rough and ready, very spit and sawdust, but it was, um, yeah, put it this way, you went in and uh, there was a baseball bat beside the stage, which the landlord told us. Don't know if you was joking or not, but he said, just in case. <laughs> Yeah, I kid you not. But anyway, we loaded in, we set up, and this Brian or Brown, whatever it was, was a kind of L-shaped place. We were playing at one end of this, of the long leg of the L, and then it went up, the bar was at the corner, and then it went up and turned. And down where we were, there was a load of bikers and hippies and punks and all the kind of people that turn up the rock gigs. And we got a particularly good turnout because word had got out that um, rather than their normal standard cover bands that I used to get in there regularly, there was an English band that had albums out that were playing in the that were playing at this pub. So it was the dog leg end where we were playing was pretty full. As was the top end. Now the top end was a very typical Welsh pub, rugby boyos and. You know, retired miners and, you know, working class, bit and sword, that sort of the earth type characters. And, you know, they were tolerating the noise we were making and, you know, and the landlord was happy because he was selling lots of beer and all this sort of thing. And we're on stage, we're giving it 19 to the dozen and we're going down really, really well. Now, those of you that have seen Alien Stashed In will know what I'm about to say. Those of you that haven't, I better explain. On our first album, there's a track called Just Another Soldier's Song, and it's a bit of an anthem of ours. Primarily because the chorus just goes, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. It's an anti-war song, and it's about, you know, putting two fingers up to the governments and politicians that are going to send you out to die. And this song, it's probably one of our best known tracks. And, um, you know, it's we always close our set with it. If we don't, it doesn't work anywhere else in the set apart from the end. And if we don't close it with it, um, we get complaints. Occasionally we'll end up at a festival where we get asked not to play it because of, um, you know, family audiences. And we're happy with that. But you can guarantee if every time we don't play it, we have to answer to a couple of the fans afterwards. But anyway, we go, um, the song starts off nice and kind of acoustic and it goes on about, you know, soldiers throughout history being called up to fight in mean, the various wars and it references Vietnam, World War One, World War Two, um, you know, the Zulu rising, that lots and lots of wars from that world history are referenced. Then it cuts into the cuts into the big play out bit at the end, which has the anthem, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. And you know, I swear at the audience, I'll give them the I'll give them the bird, I'll give them the V's, they throw it back, they swear at each other, we swear at various members of the band, we swear at the bar staff. Everybody just has a big, big party jumping around swearing at each other. Yeah, maybe not very sophisticated, but it's fun. Anyway, we, we 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 
just before that bit, there's a bit of a guitar solo. So I'm sitting there and I'm on rhythm guitar at the time on this particular point. Chunk, you know, right in the riff. John John Gold, our guitar, lead guitarist at the time, is doing all the whittly plank spanking stuff. He gives me the nod. I just go up to the mic and I go, fuck you, fuck you. Just at that point, the door at the back of the pub opens and this biggest, meanest, ugliest looking rugby style prop forward walks in the door. Took one look at the, st at the stage and all he can see is me going, fuck you. Well, <laughs> you could see his face go, oh, I can imagine his voice going thinking, who's he? He's English. He's swearing at me. He's flicking me the V's. He wants a bit. And he starts walking menacingly down the walls of the stage. Now, I'm seeing him come in and I'm thinking, oh God, where's that baseball bat? <laughs> <coughs> but as he gets, gets into the crowd around the stage, he begins to realise that they're all swearing along as well. And it's actually part of the performance and it's not a direct to him. So he looks at me and goes, ah, right, OK. North smiles and walks off. Um, yeah, after the gig, I have a lot, I, I, he comes up, buys me a pint. And we have a chat with him and he and he just comes in and he thought he's had, he's had a bad day. He walks in and that was. But then he said we, we cheered him up. So, you know, that was cool. Um they offered us the gig, gig back at the brand, but so unfortunately, we never made it back. Um, it's a shame because now I believe the pub's not there. If you do know that the brand or the Bryn, whatever it's called, or the Bryn, is still standing in my, uh, just outside my stake, then let us know. And if they're still booking bands, we will definitely return. But anyway, um, there's no point in being in my stake, coming all the way back to Bristol, where we're based, and then heading off to Clannachley, uh the following day for a gig. And some of the people, uh, actually it was the per person whose birthday it was, whose name has completely gone out of my head, I apologise, uh, turned around and said, well, we're having a bit of a birthday party after your gig. We can put, we got a fairly big house, you can crash in our place and, um, you know, have a bit of a party. So three of us went to the party. John John Gould, the guitarist, um, the guitarist, uh, he's got family in Clannetley and uh, he, did, he was going to go and visit them for the night rather than um, and hang out with them the following day and meet us at the gig rather than go to the party. Uh, I, I'm not sure whether he made the right move or not. We get to the party and it's not a huge kind of um, mass gathering. It's a really nice house up on the edge of the town literally the last house in town um the garden goes up onto the mountains beyond um it's a lovely clear night the stars are out it's warm and we've gathered in the garden in the garden we've got a um yeah it's kind of a fairly big garden and then they, we're all sitting around what's a drum of an old washing machine that's been cleverly converted into a wood burner so we got the nibbles coming round. We got some drinks coming round. We got a nice fire going in the thing where everyone's sitting around. We're chewing the fat. There's a couple of people have broken out acoustic guitars. We do a couple of acoustic. The members of the in that are there do a couple of acoustic numbers. Um, with a couple of other guys that were there playing bands or musicians, they do songs. We all entertain each other, and. You know, we end up kind of, when we get sick of playing, we end up listening, listening to a guy called Captain Hot Knives, who's a, think of a, think of Captain Hot Knives as a cross between Billy Bragg and uh, John Cooper Clark. You know, he's a kind of poet, comedian, singer, guy, talented geezer. Anyway, um, but the, uh, the fire's running low at some point, and then one bloke goes, I've got some more wood up the back there. He goes, uh, and he comes about these big lumps of like log. And he and as he's chucking them in the fire, he goes, Oh yeah, he said the council were replacing the telegraph poles outside the other day. I asked them, could I have one? And they gave it to me, so I've chopped it up for firewood. And before any one of us could point out the problem with this, it caught fire. Now, 
I don't know if you're listening outside the UK or how your telegraph poles are worked, but basically in um, in the UK, telegraph poles are made by huge, great big chunks of, I think it's pine or whatever tree is out, ever handable, stripped down, turned into a pole, and they literally soak it in clear soak for months probably to kind of seal it all in. Clear soak is very flammable and very, very smoky and quite toxic. And within about three or four minutes, this nice little garden place that we're sitting in, all sitting around having to cut the ciders and, you know, munching a few munchies and that, is suddenly a pea super. Couldn't see your hand, that point in front of your face. Um, of thick, black, choking, acrid smoke that's beginning to smoke out the entire street. Um, everyone abandons the garden, and a couple of people kind of manage to get wet tea towels around their, their heads and go in and whip these burning logs out of the um, uh, brazier thing. And... You know, there's someone literally pour, you know, shoveling soil out of a flower bed over the top to put it out because it's smouldering and smoking. And then it takes about another 25, 30 minutes for the smoke to clear from this courtyard place we're sitting in. And, um, you know, we stagger back, kind of, yeah, that was fun, wasn't it? Bearing in time, this time most of us are drunk. Now, at this point, one of the, the, the woman whose birthday it was breaks out one of her birthday presents. It's a, one of the biggest bottles of vodka I've ever seen in my life. It was huge. And she had a couple of bottles of Coke there. And we had that vodka and Coke. It's my favourite drink. All drink vodka and Coke. Now, we're sitting there as we're drinking. I said, we're already more than a little bit drunk at this point. And the, what well, starts out that much vodka, that much Coke, ends up with that much vodka, that much Coke. It's the colour of urine, and it's got a kick on it like a mule. And, you know, now, I don't drink. It's probably one of the reasons I don't drink very much these days. But, um, you know, I used to get to the point where once I hit a certain stage of drunkenness, I could just keep going because, you know, I wasn't going to get any drunker. And I'll, not a very good thing to do, I know, but I drink till I passed out. Well, basically, um, the uh, the place where this house we were staying in, she had cleared out a spare room and just chucked a load of mattresses on the on, on the floor for bands and guests and that. Some of the guys had gone to bed at this point. I was a bird in the midnight oil with a couple of people still drinking these lethal concoctions until, oh, God, it must have been about five, six in the morning when I eventually turned in. Now, I can't remember this, but Jeff, who's one of our road crew, said it's one of the scariest things he's seen in his life. I walked into this room, strict stark bollock naked, and just went wham, and just crashed, and crashed down, down on the middle of the floor and lay there. And everyone's going, um, okay, let's cover him up with a duvet. <laughs> well, I got woken up about, about, at the crack of noon, and my head was oh it felt like someone was, was extending the m4 in there and out there m4 motorway big highway if you don't know if you this outside the uk but the, someone's building a road through my brain you know jackhammers oh god it was terrible so but anyway i got given something as a hangover cure and then had a full english breakfast well welsh breakfast as it was then forced down my gullet because, uh, yeah. And although I was still feeling very tender, it meant that, you know, I could get my head together for the next gig. Yeah, we had a gig that night as well. And um, <coughs> basically, uh, we, we didn't, we got told we could take the back way from uh, my state to Clinetley. These friends of ours, um, Di and Errol, they got they, at the time they had a little uh, silver coloured camper van. They, they called the Silver Machine, big Hawking fans. And uh, with them leading us in the uh, us in the Big Red Devil, which was Breeze's big kind of uh, 
crew bus type vehicle behind. We eventually trucked into, drove down, went to Diane Errol's for tea. They gave us a bite to eat and a cup of tea and helped us get our heads together a bit more. And then we turned up at the Kaz Bar for the gig. <laughs> now, John John's there, our guitarist, who wasn't at the party. And he's kind of quite, yeah, happy. Yeah, he's just spent the day with his, fa with his kind of family or friends, whatever it was, doing stuff in the Nestle and catching up and all this kind of thing. The rest of us walked in looking like we'd been hit by sledgehammers. <coughs> and, um, you know, we set up, we sound checked, the support band arrived. Now, the support band were a kind of alt-rock band, a heavy alt-rock band called The Effect. And lovely, but only youngsters, these guys are about 17, 18 years old. And um, basically, they went on stage and they played a blinder. They won the audience over, they went down a storm. They are local lads and they had their mates in the audience, so, you know, they did have a bit of a home, 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 home field advantage, but they played a blinding gig. And then we staggered on, still feeling the effects of um, kind of uh, the gig, the, uh, the party the night before, and blundered through, blundered through a set the best we could. Not our best ever performance, but we managed to hold it together and... You know, it's one of these things when you're on stage, even if you're not feeling 100% when you go on, if the crowd starts picking up on what you're playing, you can normally feed on the crowd's adrenaline, which is roughly what happened. We staggered through to the end and um, packed up and came home. And, uh, you know, nice long drive back to Bristol, kebab. Uh, uh, we always have a kebab from Shazzy's Kebab Shop on Church Road in Bristol, advert. Uh, oh, Lawrence Hill, Chassis Kebabs. Uh, <coughs> next to the Pack Horse Pub. <coughs> I had a kebab at Chassis. And then um, I had my radio show the following day, uh, BCFM. And um, put it this way, it was prepared, that show was prepared on the fly because uh, trying to sleep off the effects of the alcohol and the sheer exhaustion and the adrenaline come down from the previous two days you know i didn't actually you know i went i got i got to bed about three in the morning by the time we got back from from lanetley and i didn't wake up until about up past four five o'clock in the evening leave me only about two hours to get a show together before i had to go out to the radio station so but i survived and um yeah and it's one of those weekends that's kind of uh we reminisce about when we're sort of like hanging out with the lads and that. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed my uh, next, my latest road tale. Um, I'll be back next week with another one. I haven't forgotten doing my album reviews. They're coming back in a month or two. I'll just take it a break. I was getting a bit album reviewed out. I've still got plenty of stuff to review, though, so I'll get back to that later. And, um, you know, and some of these stories I'll be telling you over the next couple of weeks may not always be mine. These may be just things that happen to friends of mine. So... Until next week, peeps. Alien Stash in the hours are down there, as are the radio shows. I know over there or over there. One of the two. And until next week, peeps. Um, feedback, comment, subscribe, share. Do what you like. Because I love you all. And I'm out of here. Bye. <laughs>